Hello all, this is Dr. Dave Maslach talking about reciprocity.com. The E is written with a th three. And in this particular video, I really want to talk to you about, you know, what are some great research topics, paper topics for for you? You know, what are some, some good ones? I, I made a list of 10 different sort of research topics that you might want to explore. I'm a professor of innovation strategy and entrepreneurship. And this is really useful for anybody that's interested in becoming an academic writer or maybe somebody that's interested in doing sort of nonfiction and exploring around the world around them. So it's part of my Monday Write series that I just try to be helpful for writers out there. So the first thing that I would point out, the sort of first research topic that you should explore and try out is just find something that's really unusual in your day-to-day -day life. So you wanna look for things that just kinda of stop you in your tracks and, and, and they just make you feel really strange and, and weird, right? You're like, well, why does that happen? That's really strange. And that'll happen to you every couple of days if you're sort of keying, paying attention to different things and stuff like that, that you will definitely understand what are things that are strange and you will well, they'll jump out to you if you're just keeping your eyes open. That's the best way to find a research topic that you can explore and spend some time into. Um, the second thing that you can do is look into a particular phenomenon at a different level of analysis. So what do I mean by level of analysis? It's how you sort of look at a particular phenomenon. So whether it's at the individual level, maybe it's sort of the chemistry level, biology level, maybe it's at the population, how things sort of interact. And, you know, just looking at it at a different level of analysis can get you some really cool insights that you would never imagine that you'd be able to think about before if you just simply change the level of analysis. So maybe how love works and what is the effect of love at the population level, right? So why do people actually love each other? Or why do we have this evolutionary propensity to love each other. I mean, it's kind of a strange and, and wonderful thing, right? Why we actually have that. Um, the third thing that you could do is go and just really ask your friends and family about what you should be looking into, right? So maybe you are getting into research for the first time and you're not kind of comfortable with what you should do. Just go ask friends and family and have a conversation. Go have a, a, a tea, a coffee, a beer, whatever it is. Just go out there and, and explore the world and talk to people and see what they think. So for us, uh, you know, being a professor of innovation and strategy, what we have to do is go talk to managers. And when you talk to managers, you're like, well, you know, well, I didn't think about that before. That really comes, um, you know, comes in, comes into the foreground when you start talking to people and sort of looking to see what they also say. Um, you know, the other thing is looking to see at what other people are uh, um, investigating and exploring and talking about, you know, that is going to get you to a really good spot because that means it's really popular, but then just use a completely different theoretical lens or a different way of looking at it, right? I think that's where Malcolm Gladwell does a wonderful job of sort of understanding the world. He looks at it kind of uniquely that somebody else wouldn't have looked at, right? So, um, for example, you might look at the world in terms of, you know, one particular theory like, like transaction cost economics, for example, and you can sort of look at the same phenomenon using a learning-based uh, model of the world, right? That's going to give you a different, really different th view of the world, right? Um, the, 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 the fifth thing that I would suggest that you might want to explore is to try to show something, you try to find an, a situation that you think would be impossible to actually happen and then sort of work back into figure out, out the conditions in which it might be possible. That's going to be really interesting. It's going to really jump out at you and you are going to be surprised in how you might be able to find that. So for example, you know, maybe there is life at the bottom of the sea. What are the conditions under which life under the bottom of the sea is going to pop out, right? And that might be really warm vents and stuff like that that we've never sort of thought about for a long time, right? We didn't think that that was possible until, what was it, like 40 years ago, right? Now we know that that, that is possible because of these vents. Um, you know, a, a, a sort of sixth thing, seventh thing that you should explore is look to see 
what you're spending your money on. So do an, a quick audit of all the receipts and all the things that you spent your money on. Just go into your bank account and look for the last three months of what you spent your money on. And 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 that's going to go, it's called a revealed preference in economics, if you don't know. That basically whatever you spend your money on is the thing that's most important to you. So you might look at something that is sort of your free, free money, free cash, your um, expendable cash, and look to see what you're spending your money on and do research on that. That's going to be something that you're going to be passionate about that you are going to 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 love right um you know the the other thing so an, an eighth thing that you could try is do something do some research on a particular topic that is essentially meta right so go into what do i mean by that so go into so for example go into organizations and try to understand organizations but then try to use a lens or try to explain a phenomenon that is that's personal personal to you right so i study learning from failure Failure is something I'm really comfortable with. I really, truly know. I've experienced it lots and lots and lots in life. So that's the reason why I study learning from failure. And that means I have lots to say about how that works in organizations, how it might sort of play out. Um, and a thing that you can try to do, which is going to be really fun, is do a brainstorming exercise. And brainstorming is really fun. You can look up all sorts of different exercises. I, I put stuff up before. If you look at my, some of my older videos, uh, what you do is you just kind of spend a half an hour and write as many crazy ideas as you possibly can. Just go and write and write and write as many crazy as you, ideas as you can. Don't stop yourself. Just write as much as you can and then stop after the half an hour once you get about 30, 50 ideas. 100 ideas and you will be able to get those ideas doesn't matter what they are uh, and then at that point you kind of screen them or you combine them and interact them in kind of different ways and you might find something that's really unique and fun that you would never you, you wouldn't be able to do right you shouldn't be able to be stuck at that moment there's so much that you can do um, a ninth thing that you could do that is really truly wonderful for finding a good research topic or finding some sort of research topic that suits you is go and find available data sets that are really easy to find and that are open. There's lots of them that are available that you can jump into and just start looking around and finding, well, why is that happening? Well, why is that happening? Just kind of break it down and look at all those available data sets and you'll be able to find things really quickly. Um, and, and, and you will find phenomena that, you, that are really quite interesting, right? So that you'll find a research topic very, very easily um, and and quickly so the 10th thing that I would recommend a 10th sort of good research topic that I would recommend is to mimic what's the mimic what other people are doing in in what you're interested in right or one particular area it's sort of general area that you're interested in replicate their findings go and do their study redo it uh, again see if you can replicate it if you can't that's really interesting right and that sort of tells people that there's something going on there um go in and try to mimic as much as you possibly can with everything that they're doing and see what happens when 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 you do that and you'll find out that there's so many really interesting things when you do that uh, that you wouldn't be able to know before and it's going to be wonderful so for example you know just go mimic mimic try to find out what what you know some of the stuff that i'm doing i don't know maybe you can find out with uh, somebody in a particular maybe you're interested in sort of calorific uh, intake and the impact on exercise or something like that. So you'd go and look to see, you know, what is a essential paper there to see if you could replicate it. Should be fairly easy on sort of a pilot scale, a simple scale, see if you can replicate it. If you can't, Ooh, that's awesome. You have a interesting insight and you try to figure out what are the conditions under which it does hold and doesn't hold. And you will have a wonderful study um, that is going to be very impactful. So that's it. That's what I really wanted to talk about. Um, this is part of my Monday Write series again. I'm trying to be as helpful as I possibly can. These are 10 really good, great ways to find research topics to explore. You're going to love them. Try them out. Um, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you on the next video. Bye.